And then you could look historically at these productivity numbers where productivity in America has always steadily gone up. And that's super important. China productivity was actually declining because of this ability to tap into unlimited labor. And I think the U.S. is in a good position with, with a head start on being able to realize productivity. Welcome to the Manufacturing Come Up. We have Carl. I don't. Can you pronounce your last name for me? Carl Dukeson. And and I just, Dukeson. I literally, I was in Japan last week, and I literally just landed back here in in Austin like ten hours ago. So oh, hopefully, wow. I'm not. You know, I'm I'm, <laughs> I'm I'm I've had my coffee shot here. I'm 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 getting there. So uh, it was it's my first trip to Asia since the you know, post pandemic. So it was just, uh, it was right. a great trip. I mean, I wasn't over there. I get, were you over there just visiting another facility? Yeah. Or? Yeah. We made the pilgrimage to, uh, to, to Fanuc, to, to, you know, to Mount Fuji there. And, uh, that was, nice. that's actually my, my, uh, fourth trip to, to Fanuc. Um, uh, but mm -hmm. they're, they're back up and, and running, uh, you know, any roboticist needs to make that trip. It is just, unbelievable to see the really? robots making robots um it 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 really is the the closest thing i've ever seen to, to lights out manufacturing it's the, the scale they operate at yeah do they do they have like open uh tourism or something yeah they have the the best way is to to get into that is to work through a your your local fan who contact they have a annual private show where they take mm -hmm. um usually two, three busloads of Americans. And, and I've done this trip in the past. Uh, and, and that was shut down during the COVID, but it'll, it will be back up again. Uh, it, it's, it's, awesome. it's, 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 it's amazing. Uh, and, and it's yeah. not just amazing from the robotic standpoint, but also from, you know, flow manufacturing and, and these plants, these lines are just set up to to be extremely efficient and so it's just every time i go there i learn something yeah absolutely i'm sure they have i mean they have to have the the best uh process flows and and best like production oh, uh, right right and they're they're constantly bringing the, their customers in there and and it was funny we were asking them about some of the markings on the robots and they said oh these robots with the green tape those are the robots that are making the robots because a lot of people, when they watch the process, they can't tell, you know, which, which robots are <laughs> producing the robots and, and which robots are being produced because it's just a big Thank blur you. of yellow uh, robot arms yeah. flying around. It, it is really <laughs> cool. Yeah. Yeah. I'll definitely have to make that trip over there. Yeah, you, you should You should talk to your local uh, Fanuc person. They, they can, I'm sure yeah. get you on the, on the list. They do it once a year. Um, I'm pretty sure there's one coming up maybe. And, and it, 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 it they, they have a limit, you know, how many people they can bring, but mm -hmm. it, it, it's, it's worth it to, to get on that list. Yeah. I got like one of, one of my visions that I have for like a, a long-term goals. I want to open up like a museum for, for like robotics and automation Ooh. and just have like a, but like my, my vision is like, I kind of want like a office slash training area slash, slash uh museum where it's like everything's like all like safety glass yeah you go in you see motion over your head like you're walking through glass hallways and you're seeing oh excellent sort of stuff. yeah we we at three we'd love to contribute to that um that museum you know we we've been yeah. around 120 years we have our own museums but uh certainly i've been pushing to get more and more robots uh front and center when it comes to uh 3m and, and what we're doing on the manufacturing side yeah absolutely i mean because you guys are are on the end of a lot of uh robot arms and and performing a lot of different automated uh applications yeah yeah it's um it's exciting you know we we um we say you know over the past 120 years we've been teaching the human how to grind polish deburr mm -hmm. finish dispense structural adhesives, apply film, um, 
do, you know, box sealing or packaging. Mm -hmm. um, now, um, our company, we really understand those applications. So we're teaching the, the robots or helping our customers uh, teach those, teach, teach the, the robots how to do that stuff. And uh, it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's really a, a, exciting. I, I always say, hey, you know, I work at a, you know, I got a robot picture on my coat here, but people <laughs> think of 3M, oh, you're the tape guy, you're the sandpaper guy. And I think, no, I'm the robot guy. <laughs> What? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So what, what got you to where you're at right now? I mean, you have a super cool position. Uh, if, if I was, uh, you know, with another company right now, I'd probably be in a similar position to you. How did you? Yeah. Get yeah. <laughs> well, it, it's, it's a great, it's a, it's a great story. And I get asked that question a lot, Malachi. Um, I was, uh, living in, in Shanghai and I was on an assignment like, uh, a lot of us 3M global company. I, so I was the, um, you know, American on assignment in China. And um, so I was traveling around China, visiting customers. And I, and I really noticed that um, very creative engineers, how they would use the, the robots. Mm. And, and I think my is, is a lot of that comes from the, the, the amount of robots in China, because of the consumer electronics industry, uh, these engineers, they start to move around. They may leave uh, an electronics OEM and go to work for a metal fabrication shop or somebody that's making knives or, you know, jet blades or, or whatever. And, and anyway, they, they're very, because of all their vast experience in electronics with all the robots, it's just second nature. Hey, why don't we have a robot do that? Yeah. And um, so whenever my boss would come over from the U.S., I would bring her to all these customers that um, using the robots. And uh, it just it was like a foreshadowing of this is this robot thing is it's coming, you know, and that was maybe six, seven years ago. And then it was actually. I don't know, 2017, my, my boss said, Hey, why don't you lead this global, you know, robot initiative for us? And, uh, and, and I started doing that job out of Shanghai. I was traveling, um, over to Europe mostly because of the connection into those robot OEMs. We had built some strong relationships in the Shanghai area. Uh, with the robot OEMs and we were able to leverage that into, you know, the, the relationships we have today. And uh, so, yeah, I mean, 3M, I've been at 3M for 30 years. I'm a, you know, you know, red blooded 3M guy. And uh, yeah. uh, it, it, our company, um, we have, 250 factories around the world. You know, we have our own supply chains that we're automating. So mm -hmm. we've really taken a lot of that automation and engineering expertise now, and we're starting to use it more and more to help our industrial customers automate yeah. as, as yeah. well. So it's, it's a, uh, yeah, it's, it's a lot of fun and uh, interested you know, obviously to continue to connect with people in the, in, uh, you know, I call it the automation ecosystem. I had a, when I was in Shanghai, I got to know one, one of my mentors is a guy named Joe Gemma, who, uh, I think probably anybody would know Joe. Um, and at the time Joe was running KUKA Americas hmm. and he, encouraged me to get active in the um what was the ria at the time the robotics industry association so i was able to get elected onto that board and and i've been pretty active in the what's now the a3 and and then also the global organization the ifr the international federation of robotics so mm -hmm. that's my participation, it's all because of uh, my mentor, Joe Gemma, 
if uh, anybody ever wonders how I got involved in those robot associations, that's that's how that came about. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, because like that's definitely something that like I I even personally want to get involved in, and especially you know as I move throughout throughout my career and as we grow as a company. Um, and we already one thing we are, we're really focused on is like trying to give back to, to the yeah. community. It's like this podcast right here is, is, is to give back to the community and, you know, kind of advise people on their career paths and, and how to, how to get to a position like you have. Yeah, that's, that's excellent because, um, obviously, uh, 3M and the robotic associations, um, manufacturing is so important to, to, um, you know, our economy and, um, you know, the future of manufacturing is in automation mm-hmm. and um, we, uh, we, we, we absolutely need, need to get, get the word out. And, and that's one of the real um, joys and maybe of, of my job is being able to, you know, work with people, uh, you know, not just executives, but, but, you know, operators in the plant whose life has been transformed um, by automation. If you think about somebody that's been, you know, grinding welds Mm -hmm. and, you know, a robot can be a bit intimidating. Like, hey, is this thing going to take my job? But it's actually the exact opposite when when that uh, technician or operator uh, realizes that they can troubleshoot, they can they can operate that robot. Sometimes they can operate two or three robots, and yep. productivity goes up. Typically, those people will move into higher pay grades, mm-hmm. and and that's exciting to to come back and and visit somebody who is now, you know, they're they're not a a, a grinder. Or, or a welder, you know, yeah. they're a robot technician. Yeah, absolutely. And, and it's it's um, it, it's it's a really powerful uh, combination for the for the U.S. Um, manufacturing industry when yeah. when you see those pockets of uh, uh, like I said, transforming somebody's life. It's it's very yeah. energizing. Absolutely, it's like the it's much funner to operate the uh, HMI of, of a robotic system than it is to sit there and grind welds. Right. Every day. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. I know. Yeah. I, it, 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 I know. Exactly. Yeah. Right. And there's, there's so many of those types of opportunities out there. I, I think that's one, maybe one of the only good things about the pandemic that I would say, um, pre pandemic, uh, the, the American public, especially labor, was very skeptical of, of automation and, and robots. And now it's so encouraging to see, uh, the press and, um, and, and labor, you know, you know, welcoming the, the, let the robots do the dirty work, you know, that, um, you know, there, there's a whole, uh, sustainability angle as well that, Mm -hmm. that, um, you know, if, if the robots are doing the dirty, dull, dangerous jobs, it frees up, um, you know, the, the human mind, the human talent for for uh, more rewarding work mm-hmm. broadly. Yeah. And, and I and yeah. so I, I'm glad, you know, we need more organizations like like yours, Malachi, to, to, to spread the word, spread the gospel. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, like today with with labor shortages the way they are, um, yeah. there's there's people that are happy to see automation because they're you know the operators having to do two people's jobs because you know Steve Steve called in today or isn't showing back up to work anymore, and uh, you know they're actually getting some relief and some break from you know not having to do two two people's jobs. Right, right, right. No, no, it, it's it's a win win uh, right now, and uh, a lot of it comes down to uh, communication and um, getting those, uh, you know, I think real human um, uh, uh, examples and that as opposed to, 
you know, just the pure statistics. I always say this, remind my association people, you know, bar charts and pie charts and statistics and, you know, to prove that robots are good for our economy. That doesn't always resonate with people. It's, it's better. Like I, I, in fact, somebody just sent me a picture um, from the Wall Street Journal yesterday, an article on automation. And here's a picture of the operator standing next to his robot. And I know this guy. And, <laughs> um, and it, you know, the whole backstory on that guy is, is very powerful. And, and I, I'm going to encourage the Wall Street Journal people to do a story on that operator instead of, you know, they, he's just kind of posing in a picture. But it, um, there's a whole backstory on how this guy's life has been transformed. And that's, that's what's really going to resonate uh, broadly uh, with, with, with um, the public and, Mm -hmm. and um, you know, the manufacturing jobs of our economy. They're so important. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's definitely going to be much more a future thing, but one thing that I, that I see and I kind of hope for humanity is that we get to a point where, automation not only uh is able to do some of the labor tasks that we have but i think we're going to get into like some more of like that universal basic income where there's going to be some version of pay what you know what i think is kind of a good mix is like we work one we work on things we're passionate about we we work uh maybe less hours you know if you're passionate about it you're going to work how many ever hours you want to work anyway but uh i think it's important that you know we're not working as many hours as we are, especially like for like your, 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 your blue collar workers and, and those who are having to work 60, 70, 80 hours a week, uh, to, to make a really good living. Uh, I'd like to see those numbers go way down and still be able to maintain that same pay. And I think through yeah. automation, we can make that happen. Oh yeah. Automation's the ticket to, uh, productivity. And, uh, what you're talking about is, is productivity, which is the, the magic formula to uh, any successful uh, industrial economy. And this was something I, you know, witnessed firsthand um, uh, in, in China uh, on the other end of the spectrum, the, the, the solution to any manufacturing issue in China historically was just throw labor at it, you know, cause labor is cheap. Um, we have in China unlimited labor essentially for the last, you know, 20, 30 years. But when I was there, um, the, you know, rural migration, the whole Chinese industrial economy was built on people migrating out of the, you know, rural areas into the urban areas where the plants were. And that model ran out of gas. And certainly the, the, the Chinese um, economists and the government quickly recognized automation now is, mm. is an important part of our future for, for that reason. They couldn't just continue to throw labor. And then you could look historically at these productivity numbers that where productivity in America has always steadily gone up. And that's super important. China productivity was actually declining because of this ability to tap into unlimited labor. Yeah. But, you know, it, it, it now, now um, we're seeing just, just massive investments in, in, in China in, in automation. And, and I, and I think, you know, the U S is in a good position with, with a head start on being able to realize, um, productivity. And, yeah. and like you said, it, it is, it is very, you know, that's one of the benefits or the outcomes is that a rewarding uh, type of uh, job where, you know, you use more your, your brain and not your back and, and, and you get productivity and you often end up working less hours and, and making more money. That's, that's, that's what productivity is. Yeah. 
Yeah, absolutely. And and going into that, like what U.S. Uh, companies kind of have a benefit of like our our labor rates are more expensive, so ROIs are there. And then for your countries that that have the lower uh, labor rates, I think they need to be automating because I think that we're becoming more of a a global economy. And you know, with things like you know remote working and and all that, you're able to to start uh, employing people across the world, right? And then and then after you're employing people across the world. You know, right now they might be cheap, but next year, 10 years from now, 20 years from now, now there's going to be the same uh, bidding going going for those type of individuals from from these higher higher uh, wage uh, countries. And at some point in time, it's going to create a balance where. Yeah. Are, yeah. No. And Malachi, you're touching on something um, very near and dear to my heart. Um, and when I give these talk, and I'll give my little, I always say automation, people ask, oh, you know, why do you automate all this? And I, and I come back to the reason to automate is number one, improve the safety of, of a, uh, you know, a, a value stream or a plant that's improve the safety. Number two, um, improve the quality of the, the parts automation um, uh, we've seen, you know, comes with that capability to really improve. And then I, a distant third is cost, you know, productivity. And I think that whenever we can um, look at these investments and the opportunities to automate in, in that kind of a sequence, number one, safety. We are going to improve the working conditions. The automation will improve the working conditions for everybody, certainly the operators. You know, number two, we're going to get more precise parts. We're going to have the ability to make things that humans can't make and achieve quality levels that humans could not achieve. Focus on those two things. And then guess what? There's going to be productivity and potentially you know, labor and cost savings, which are icing on the cake. I always right. say our industry focuses way too much on that third item. And um, what's, you know, what's the ROI? How many people can we pull out of the process? You know, that, and, and that's not always real energizing, especially if you're, you know, uh, working in a plant and, you um, you know, some new group of engineers comes in there talking about robots and how, you know, you're going to be able to run this factory with no people or whatever, which is never <laughs> true, but still word gets out and it just kind of, you know, it's so much more energizing when you say, no, no, th these robots are going to make it a, a safer, you know, more yeah. friendly work environment. And it's going to help us make the best, you know, product whatever we're making these yeah. robots are going to help us be the best at it yeah i spent a lot of time in uh in glass manufacturing and automotive glass and uh yeah that's one of the number one reasons why they're they're automating it is oh i know ROI. Did, you know i spent quite a bit of time in glass factories as well but did you <laughs> did you watch that um documentary the the american factory about i don't the, think so no the chinese glass company that takes over uh, an American um, uh, automotive assembly plant to, to make um, it's it's it is really good. It's a really good documentary. It's not that old. It's pre pandemic, but it, it really yeah. shows you um, the contrasting approaches to uh, a Chinese running a Chinese organization compared to running an American organization. It's, it's fascinating. I'd really encourage anybody that has anything to do with manufacturing, watch that documentary. It is, it's really good. And especially, you know, you, if you, if you worked in yeah. glass factories, you would find it even more fascinating. I'm kind of a, I'm kind of a nerd when it comes to consuming yeah. as much content as, as I can and revolved around manufacturing. Right, right. <laughs> same, same here. Yeah, I'm, I'm into it. Uh, it's, it's, it's so, so important. Um, and, and for me, it goes back to when I, when I was a kid, I read um, the Lee Iacocca, 
his his autobiography. He was the chairman of Chrysler. Okay. That, that turned around, saved Chrysler. You know, America first kind of American rock star CEO. But his book, all he talks about is the importance of manufacturing. And it was just drilled into me that if you don't have a solid manufacturing base, you don't have, there is no service economy. The only reason these service economies exist is because you have a strong manufacturing base. So I hope we, uh, you know, we've got a we've got a ways to go in catching up, but I, I, I think America's on a good path right now. Uh, let's go ahead. I want to take a little bit of a shift and I want to kind of get some more information on like how you uh, how you've came to where you're at in your career. And like one, like, I mean, the fact that you spent so much time at one company, I think that's that's pretty <laughs> remarkable and very honorable. Um, how what what is it that made you stick with one company so long? Yeah, you know, uh that's a that's an interesting uh question especially in in this this day and age you know it mm-hmm. just seems culturally um there is a uh, tendency to to think that you know you need to jump 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 and uh and i saw a really interesting study uh, a, a recent one on the great resignation you know during the pandemic everybody's quitting yeah. and um and and I think it was it was a statistic something like three out of four people that quit their job changed jobs during the Great Resignation wish they would have stayed you know with their um, previous employer yeah. right right yeah. but it didn't it didn't didn't seem like this Great Resignation had a happy ending that's yeah. the assumption I'm seeing so um, for me. Uh, uh, a diversified company like 3M, I would say I've been, you know, blessed to be able to uh, uh, move around. I started at 3M as a as an accountant. I started as a cost accountant. Oh wow! And um, and I I started helping the salespeople with their um, you know value selling. They wanted ROI. We called it pencil selling. And uh, the marketing boss said, hey, maybe you should work in marketing. And then I moved from finance into marketing. Mm. And that was, uh, <laughs> that was, that was wild. You know, I mean, that was, but I, but I had the, I, I, because I hadn't been in sales, I spent a super lot of time in the field visiting customers much more than my other peers in marketing trying to make up for my lack of sales experience. And then again, I mean, one of the reasons I've stayed with her is because things kept changing because that led to, Hey, you know, you're pretty good at this, you know, marketing stuff. Um, we are working on this, you know, it e-commerce, you know, so I, I got, I got moved into that to run a, a group of, you know, programmers. And then I was moved over. Um, I lived in the UK and Europe. Uh, well, that was, you know, again, just, I mean, so I, I didn't have to change companies to change jobs. That's yeah. I think one of the benefits of working um, for, for a big company. And then later um, I moved, I worked in uh, Six Sigma for three years and went through all the training, you know, did certification. And, and that's where, again, I really, uh, my finance background, the manufacturing, I just, you know, I'm really into the theory of constraints, the, um, you know, flow, uh, uh, process and, and Six Sigma was was a big part of that and then like i i said i i had later opportunity um to 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 also move to china so i was in china for five years and 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 that was again completely different job completely different um team and um yeah it just it's um 
it, I can't believe the, uh, the third, the 30 years has, has, has flown by, but I, I would say in, it used to be like that. You would talk to people work for Honeywell or IBM or, you know, whomever. And, and that was your career path. It's definitely now it's, it's, um, not the norm. Yeah, people don't stick around. Yeah. People don't people stick don't, around. People don't stick around. But I, but I think, you know, maybe, maybe we can learn from this great resignation. Um, of course it's the, um, you know, sometimes called the old economy, but, uh, I'm, I'm a firm believer that every, uh, business, even companies like 3M, you know, automation and industrial software are an important part of our future, even though our core business is always going to be the core, you know, coding, bonding, um, yeah. products that we produce, but it has to be appropriately augmented by automation and, and industrial software. Mm -hmm. And so for us at 3M as, as leaders, it's painting that vision and, and being able to draw uh, talent into the organization, people that can go to work remotely for Facebook or, you know, Amazon, or whoever, we have to be able to paint the picture that, no, there's a, there's a stable future here in, in manufacturing companies like, uh, like 3M. And yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. So that's, that's what coming from i think one thing that that had an, a little bit of an impact on on people shifting careers is is technology and like social media so like both on the side of like you can experience a company i feel like a lot easier now uh just like like an employee going in, and looking at other companies you can kind of see what type of content yeah. they're posting things like that like you said drawing people in so there's a lot more drawing in happening it's also i think it's much easier to hunt now Cause I, I, you know, obviously like I'm, I'm still like somewhat younger in my career. So there's a lot of things like, I don't know really what was there 20, 30 years ago, right. but I'm sure like it was much more difficult to find out like who's, who's the global robotic specialist yeah. at 3M a long time ago, you know? It's so, like now it's like right. easier for people to outreach to you and say, Hey, are you, do you want to come work for our company? Are you interested in entertaining this conversation? Right. Right. I, I know <laughs> it, you're, you're absolutely right. The, the labor markets are much more fluid and transparent, you know, mm -hmm. that, that, um, the, the, the opportunities are there. And I, and I think, um, especially a young person gets to offered, um, you know, an increase in pay, yep. um, that is, uh, that's, that's hard to, to say no to. Now, yep. I, I do think this, this study of the, I come back to the, the great resignation, the, um, people, um, one of, it was, it was really, it was fascinating that one of their biggest regrets in, jumping ship was they really missed their coworkers, you know, and yeah. even though it was virtual or, you know, maybe in person, um, that that was something, um, and, and I've, I've, uh, studied this too. It's, it's people, you know, the, a, a job, you get dangled a, uh, increase in pay. Um, mm -hmm. it's, it's very tempting. But the other side of that is um, when you look at why people change jobs or why people uh, quit, it's hardly ever the pay. It's almost always the, um, their, their boss, you know, is a jerk or something, you know, that's, that's right. the number one reason. Yeah. And, and so I, I do think that's a testament to, to, to 3M, I, I have had over the years, I've had some very, very good bosses. Mm -hmm. um, and not, not all of them. I've had a couple of bad ones, but I always <laughs> kept, you know, thinking about, well, you know, if you move, you could, you know, go from the fry, fry pan into the fire or what, what have you. So, yeah. you know, every, everybody's different. 
And uh, it's, uh, that was one of the encouraging things I'd say about um, uh, the visit to, to Fanuc, all these Japanese guys, even the Americans, 20, 30, 40 years at Fanuc. That, that was, you know, that was very encouraging. And, and there's some similarities there with, with the 3M culture. So that yeah. was, um, I think, two example of two great companies that kind of have that. Uh, yeah. I, I agree with you. I do think on balance, that's a good thing. I think, you know, you can't have, you, you always need new people coming into the organization and you need a balance. Can't yeah. just be 100% one way or the other. But I, I think companies like 3M, Fanuc, there's a good balance there. Yeah, it's also like extremely important too, like to have experience in individuals in the company because that's that's how the knowledge transfers over, right, over time. Right. And you know, you gotta yeah. think like, you know, I feel like I, I know a lot, but also I know that like the me today is going to be nothing from the me ten years from now. Like the amount of wisdom that I've experienced from now. <laughs> right, right. I know. I know. I know, I know exactly. Exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. What, uh, what are, what are some of the things that you, you feel like has, uh, gave you the ability to, to shift and move around within the company to give you those different type of opportunities? Yeah, I think, you know, for, for me, I've been fortunate with, you know, great support from my family, you know, willing to, to move and relocate. I mean, that's, that's one of the, um, uh, things for, for, for me. And, and I know that, um, it's, uh, like I said, everybody's different. And, um, I, I do think that, you know, we will see in this work from home hybrid, uh, economy that's emerging mm -hmm. in the U S um, I still feel very strongly that, um, you know, you, you have to be there, you know, again, I'm just taught this trip to Japan. We, we learned things. There, there's just no way you pick up on in a Microsoft teams meeting. Yeah. And, um, and so I, uh, that is one, I, I hope that companies, organizations, individuals, are willing to uh, move, you know, uproot their families, live and immerse yourself in a, a foreign culture. That's, mm -hmm. that's important. And, and I think I, um, there's just an article, big, another big article in the Wall Street Journal yesterday about how the rest of the world and we certainly saw this in Japan is back to the office. You know, the occupancy rates in Asia and Europe are approaching what they were uh, in these offices pure pre pandemic. Whereas the U S for whatever reason is really lagging there. That's still yeah. I think, uh, most office buildings are at 50% or less. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it's kind of mind blowing. I, we've yeah. we've been doing like sales calls and and going to facilities, and we'll get there and be like, "Where is everybody? Is it like right. vacation? Are y'all right. on holiday this week?" And <laughs> they're like, "No, nobody's returned since COVID." And we're like, "What?" I, I know, <laughs> and it's and it's um, you know one of the explanations. This expert from like some economist from Cushman and Wakefield or whatever was explaining that wow, in the U.S. It's really demotivating to walk into the office and it's empty. Nobody wants to come to the office. So it's, it's like, it yeah. you know, it, it, we're not going to bust out of that um, anytime yep. soon, but you know, in, in other economies, other parts of the world, it, you know, it's mandatory or, or whatever you want to call it. And when you come into the office, it's energizing, you know, yep. and, and, so guess what? More people want to come back to the office, but yeah. it's no fun going into an empty office building either. It's yeah. what's the point? I'll just stay at home and go on, yeah. you know, Microsoft Teams. Yeah, you mentioned something before about like just like the coworkers and having like that like an emotional attachment to coworkers. Yeah, yeah. 
and so like a couple things one we operate a very remote company so we uh basically have employees all over the world sure and uh and also you know whenever i left the the company that i left to start elite automation uh i was i was with that company like seven eight years and it was a hard transition like leaving all those people like because these were people i you know we built projects together we you know right you know you each guys, other's like, families you yeah you know right right absolutely and so I like know. and that and also like you know I, essentially i was starting a competitor company so like things were were were, were very like cool and good okay do your thing that's what you want to do okay um uh, and then like right at the end it got things got, got kind of weird and like sure. and so like uh you know it's like really hard for like that that like secondary family that you have like you're transitioning away to 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 starting a new a new culture with a new uh new team right right yeah yeah it 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 um again i i think like i mentioned all these studies you know the the, the money is important no doubt mm -hmm. but often it's not the most important thing if you if you think about you know, you're going to spend a third of your life uh, or a third of your day, you know, during the week, uh, you know, you want to enjoy it. Right. I mean, so um, that that's no fun uh, when if you're if you're not in, enjoying it makes for a long day. Yeah. Every every human's different. Like the one thing for me that that was like a must is growth. I probably would I probably would have never started a company if if I just had like an abundant amount of growth. Um, and, and I was given, I was definitely given the responsibility to inject growth into the company and, and, and lead things in the way that I wanted to. But then there was still leadership above me that was like, not real, really wanting to do certain things that I felt like we needed to do. And, you know, what it, what I kind of boiled down inside of my mind was that Okay, I can either go and, and work for another company and see if I can climb that ladder there, or I can just go start my own thing and and you know basically have only myself as a limiting factor to uh, to where we take things. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, and so you know that's right. what also it's, made. <laughs> it's not for the faint of heart. I really, um, I really admire you know, and 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 I and I think. Again, that's another uh, unique thing about the American uh, economy, the ability to start new businesses and, and how um, it, it's, it's the backbone of the American economy, the small, medium sized business. Yeah. It, is, it is really an, an amazing, amazing thing. And, and yeah, we need more. And it's in realistically, it's like it's pretty easy to, to start a company and right. To, you know, I mean, the hard part is after you start it, but you know, um, it's easy, easy to, to have the ability to have a, a door open up and you can even, you know, navigate different routes. You might be an engineer and you start a, a lawn care company, you know, uh, it's probably an yeah. easier company than an automation company, but <laughs> right. hey, automation is coming to the landscaping industry big time. That's, uh, I, I mean, so some creative engineers are really going to disrupt the landscaping industry, no doubt. Yeah, I think one of the biggest reasons why I wanted, why I went ahead and pursued an automation company, other than just my experience being in automation, is one, automation has the ability to make money. Then after you have the ability to make money, you now also, as you've grown, built the skill set of engineers that have the capability to do like R&D type of work uh, to, to take on some of these other interesting areas of automation that are not, not necessarily being targeted at this point or not being funded very well. I mean, the, it's completely endless. I mean, I, you know, I envision that like Walmarts and stuff that eventually they stock their, all their shelves are stocked like a vending machine. Like there won't be any, oh, yeah. any right. human stocking of anything. It's going to bag your groceries for you. Like it's going to get to I, that point. I know. I mean, I, I always like, like, like you, Mel, I, I think about, you know, just think about the, the people, um, living, you know, a hundred years ago in our shoes and, um, you know, the technologies that were coming out, the, the ability, 
you know, the, the telephone or, or whatever it was. I mean, it was, but you, you could just, you couldn't um, realize that, you know, you could climb into this uh, aluminum, you know, composite tube and, and be in Japan in, you know, 10 hours, for example. <laughs> right. Yeah. I mean, you just, you couldn't even, it, it's not even, uh, and, and so you think now, what about these, you know, like my, my kids, they always, they'll see pictures of me and they'll say, what's, what's that thing on, on the wall from your, you know, talking on the yeah. phone? Well, that's a cord, you know. <laughs> you know, and, and I, I want to, I think that, um, when, when I have young children, but when I'm grown up and they're grown up, you know, they'll, they'll look at the, I think the car and say, see pictures of me drive, say, what's that thing, that round thing you're holding, you know, what is that yeah. for, you know, because <laughs> it, it will, you know, it's going to the, the autonomy level five autonomy and all this, you know, that, that stuff that that will happen it'll happen in in my lifetime i'm convinced mm -hmm. and uh so uh, that's just one example of something but how many other things what's the equivalent yeah. to getting on an airplane and and flying you know 500 miles an hour to some place on the other side of the earth which right. 100 years ago you know, you just couldn't even, the engineering yeah. behind that. Yeah. And, and also to reach like an e economical scale where like right. mass population can, can be able to do it. Right. Right. <laughs> exactly. The, the travel, um, for, for, for the, for the masses, it's, it's very, yeah. it's, it's very it's, reasonable these days and it's safe. Um, I think it's highly plausible. I don't, I still don't know if it'll happen in my lifetime, maybe my kids' lifetime, but I think it's highly plausible. There'll be affordable, uh, flights to space. I think you'll be able to like fly. Yeah. More right. And, right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if you, you know, that's the science fiction, you know, I always, when I was a, a kid, I watched star Trek, you know, and, and remember captain Kirk, he had this little thing it was a communicator flipped it open. He could talk to anybody and, yeah. and nobody, you know, that was just pure science fiction. That, yeah. you know, how can he do that? There's no cord. There's no, you know, network, yeah. you know, um, and that, that became a, a reality. So I, I think yeah. too, like that, that some of these, like one of my favorites is um, the expanse, you know, the, that Amazon series on mm -hmm. how Mars is colonized, you know, and, and they, mm -hmm. you know, I've done, it's a very, you know, thought out, uh, Futuristic, yeah. science fiction show, very scientific, mm -hmm. how they, you know, use the moon as a, as a launching pad to get to Mars. And, and it's, mm -hmm. it's way off in the future, but, but yeah, space travel is, still pretty exotic but much more common and uh and economical uh like like you said i i agree that it's human nature we're, we're gonna get there this is one thing for me that that i think it, why why it's so important how we like guide how like how we live as humans and guide like you know what our work-life balance is like i hope we either, either like governmentally do it i hope that some somehow like a capitalist system that we can do it, but just really guide like our society to be like conducive to a, a good positive life. Right. Like at this point in time, like there's, we have enough technologies that if we just develop the human resources on earth towards, uh, you know, making our lives easier, then, you know, we, we wouldn't have to work as much. It's not even about just working as much. Right. But if you think about it, if we go interplanetary, <laughs> and, 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 and we start to spread as a, as an organism, like you want that, that spread to be like a positive energy versus like right, being ran right. by like some dark oh. entity. And, <laughs> and I think, you know, I think science fiction, it's an important part of, uh, and, and cause there's, there's a number of examples. I think the one uh, movie 
on how not to do it, just like to your point, is that Elysium, you know, with uh, uh, the, the famous actor Matt Damon and that technology and automation became a tool for the super, super wealthy, the super, mm. um, you know, where it's only available to a very small portion of the population. Mm. And that, of course, doesn't have a happy ending. It's, that's a, not a good thing. You know? Yeah. Well, Was that the one where they like created like the life serum or something like that? No, that's the one where they create a, a, a space station off of uh, Earth because life on Earth has become, a, mm. it's a scorched Earth. You know, gotcha. there's nothing left. It's just and gotcha. slave labor, people making robots <laughs> on <laughs> Earth to support these rich people that live up in this paradise um, gotcha. in, in space. And... Uh, it it very uh, I think you know great movie Jerry Rose, Foster's yeah. in it I yeah. mean it's a, it's an all star cast but it's it's pretty dark yeah but I I yeah, do was... think it's a you know you know and it's extreme I doubt anything like that would ever happen mm -hmm. however it is I think uh, a reminder that um, technology and just like our discussion earlier on how important robots are for the for the blue collar worker for the mm -hmm. operators um, mm -hmm. for labor it, they're very important and it, it can't yeah. we can't make this message that automation robot it's this elite thing yeah. that you know uh, for for rich people to run our factories by remote control you know <laughs> that's that's yeah. not the right message at all yeah i feel like we really we really need to define like what we want to do as humans mm -hmm. right because like you know automation can go as far as like sticking a feeding tube down your throat and you're just fed or, <laughs> or going to a or going to a, a virtual simulation like at what what point of, of like what we do in our daily life is uh is like a task that we want to do or like like say for instance like going to the grocery store will be a want to thing like if you just want to go to the grocery store go to the grocery store Right. Yeah, you don't yeah. have to go to the grocery well, store. I mean, already like we, we right, uh, right. Use, like Instacart and stuff sometimes because optimization of time. Right. But at what point in time uh, am I optimizing my time so much that I'm now just like one with the computer, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. No, I know what you mean. Hey, Malachi, this is, this has been great. I, I really, uh, really appreciate this and I look forward to working with you and, seeing you out and about i imagine you'll be at uh, automate right yeah. in uh um be there yep yep yeah i'll be there and then uh, i'd like to invite you too we're having uh last week of july in in minneapolis we'll, we're having a a, a global uh, robotics conference hmm. uh, we're sponsoring that with okay. with our friends at ati industrial automation and and then okay. the a3 so uh, awesome. that will be fun for, for, you know, my hometown kind of be the automation center of the universe for a couple of days. Awesome. That's super cool. Yeah, we'll be there. Yeah. Hey, thank you. No problem. Before you run, do you have any last valuable tips to add to the community? I, I just would, would add, let, let's um, continue these, these human connections, you know, connect with me connect with you and, and let's, let's do more of this stuff, especially when we're together at events like, like automate, you know, it's, it's important for us to, to have these, um, uh, discussions about what's important to our industry. And mm -hmm. like, like you and I talked about, you know, it's, it's safety, improving the quality of life, improving the quality of the products. It's automation is not all about, um, squeezing more labor out of everything you know that's right. that's not what automation is about and we shouldn't we shouldn't lead with that um mm -hmm. we should lead with you know that's a that's a benefit that's an outcome of of, of effective automation so that's absolutely. that's my main message absolutely awesome well thank you for for being here today carl yeah anytime really enjoyed it likewise looking forward to catching you at the at the next event yep thanks malachi thank you have a great Bye -bye. day